Disney's live-action remake of the animated 1998 classic Mulan is set to release in theaters on March 27th. There's been quite a bit of controversy surrounding this film, and the recent news is that it has gotten a rating of PG-13. Why this is significant is because there has been no other live-action remake of a classic animated Disney film that's gotten a rating above PG. Now, this is going to have some drawbacks for the film, and it's become a topic of discussion. And there's a pretty good reason why it got this PG-13 rating rather than a PG rating. And that reason is because Mulan, despite its wholesome themes about personal discovery, overcoming gender stereotypes and gender roles in society, and it's at its core, Mulan is a war movie. It's a war story about a heroine who takes her father's place in war. Now that's the main reason, but there are some other changes that director Nikki Caro makes to this film that I think are significant and deserve to be highlighted. Firstly, let's compare this to Jean Favreau's remake of The Lion King. This film got a lot of criticism for being a shot-for-shot -shot remake of the original. Now, that wasn't entirely a bad thing. There was very excellent uh, voice casting. The voices and paired with the animation was a little bit off to some for some people, but the animation was stellar, and it really didn't disappoint fans. It was about what most people expected, and for younger fans who hadn't seen the original story, you, you really couldn't disappoint. It was a fantastic film, and it did really well for Disney. The reason I bring up this comparison is that this new Mulan film has none of the original songs from the original Mulan animated film. Now this isn't entirely a new thing for Disney live action remakes. There are a few that forego the musical elements, namely Alice in Wonderland and Maleficent. These films have a very heavy fantasy element to them, where I think Mulan, though it does have elements of fantasy, as we see with Mushu, Eddie Murphy's um, dragon character in the original animated. But Mulan is more set in a realistic setting rather than a magical fantasy world. Though it is based on a traditional Chinese legend, the 360 word poem from the 11th or 12th century um, that tells the story of Hua Mulan. I will leave a link to the Wikipedia page about that story in the description if you want to read up on the actual Chinese legend. But this this story of Mulan is based more in reality, and I think that director Nikki Caro is trying to do something here that really highlights the Chinese culture and this this story in a way that's not um, Disney princessified, a way that it's in a way that it's not it's not going to take away from the the real and um, heartfelt elements of the story by throwing too much fantasy at the audience. That being said, there are going to be some magical elements and fantastical elements of this new Mulan film. There are confirmed in the trailers some shape-shifting shenanigans that are undergone by the female antagonist, but other than that, this film is going to be more focused on the action than the fantasy world. At the time of this video, Mulan has not received any reviews, but there are critics who are skeptical about how well this film will do, mainly because it's taking such a big turn from the original film. Lion King was very successful in that it was stayed very true to the original piece that it was adapted from, the original Disney story, well, which was also adapted from Hamlet, but that was a very loose adaptation as well, but they stayed true to the Disney movie. That's the point I'm trying to make here. This film is going to take an entirely new direction and is going to base itself more on the original story, the original legend, than it is the animated film that we're familiar with, and that's got a lot of people worried. Now, to address the PG-13 rating, I think this will both hurt and help the film. It'll hurt the film in regards to you're going to have a little bit of an older audience attending this film, probably people who are in their 20s who grew up with the story of Mulan, the animated film of Mulan. It was very popular. It was uh, created in 1998. So people who are in their 20s, late 20s, uh, early 30s who are starting families might bring their kids to it. But it's going to be a primarily, I think, um, older audience going to see the film that they were familiar with and they want to see how it was adapted into a live action film. Now, I don't think this is going to hurt Disney as much as you would think. I think that their release of the Pixar film Onward is really going to capture more of the market and it's not going to cannibalize itself too much compared to what you would expect. So Onward and Mulan are going to be in theaters at the same time. Onward did receive a PG rating, so I think that more of the young families are going to be going to that movie. 
where the maybe families with older children or the single adults are going to be going to Mulan rather than Onward or both if they have time for it. But if they are going to be cannibalizing each other, I think that it's going to be an age split a little bit. That could hurt Mulan's performance individually. But as a whole, I think Disney is going to be well off with the chosen release time as well as the rating. I don't think that going the more action route is going to hurt them so much since they do have two films that are releasing at the same time that have the elements of of a family film and have the elements of an action film with a little bit more intense story and intense um, motion picture elements that you could really want. You have a bigger range, which I think is going to help Disney. um, And I think Mulan is going to do well because of it. There are a few concerns for this film in regards to the rating and in general. One of the concerns that some critics have is that this film might not deliver on meaningful action sequences. Something that Chinese films get a lot of flack for from Western audiences is the -the over-the-top and dramatic action sequences that really do not add to the story. There are a lot of Chinese movies that do action very well. Off the top of my head, one of my personal favorites, Little Big Soldier, starring and written by Jackie Chan, which of course has some comedic elements to the action because it is a Jackie Chan film. But there, there are quite a few good examples. But I could also see this film being akin to something like The Great Wall, which was a Western English-Chinese Ch- movie that starred uh, quite a bit of star power. It was starred Matt Damon, Willem Dafoe, Pedro Pascal, as well as some Chinese film stars in there as well. And this film was just mind-numbing action with very little story elements, and it, it really did terribly for the amount of star power that it really had. Um, and that's the sort of movie, and I'm not saying that this is you know, every Chinese action movie, but it's the sort of movie that has that stereotype that a lot of Chinese movies have as it pertains to a Western audience. And I think that if Mulan does action very poorly, it might be perceived just this way and it won't do as well in the box office. Luckily, this movie does have a saving grace. A perfect example of a great action Chinese movie is Ip Man. It stars the legendary Donnie Yen. There are a few of these movies. And Donnie Yen is in this film. So he has a lot of experience with directing and doing choreography and performing in tremendous action sequences. And the director, Nikki Caro, does not quite have that experience. So I definitely think that Donnie had quite a bit to do with the choreography and and the action scenes in this film. And I think that if any if Ip Man is a great example with the budget this film had there's going to be some tremendous action shots and i just can't wait to see them and i really think mulan's going to do action pretty well and if it doesn't i'll i'll be very surprised i'll eat my hat another minor criticism and fear expressed by a few critics namely grace from beyond the trailer is that this film is not going to have a strong male character Now, we've seen with action films, there is kind of a formula that they follow with one starring a male character. There needs to be a a strong female character that goes along with that role and vice versa. If there is a strong female lead, there needs to be a strong male character uh, in the film as well to sort of balance that out and help the audience with regardless of gender identify with at least one of the characters in the action film to really progress it and and do well as an action film and this formula has been tested time and time again and it, it really works and Mulan has cut out the primary male protagonist with General Shang not being in the film so it's up in the air whether or not this film will succeed in that regard. So if we take Birds of Prey as an example, as a recent example, it had an all-female cast with the only male character really being the villain, and there wasn't a lot for a male audience, this is a generalization of course, to identify with, and this film did rather poorly in the box office, and Grace as well as a few other critics um, take the same opinion as I do in this regard, and that you need to have a balance of genders in an action film in order for it to really do well. Now, they do replace General Shang with a love interest of Mulan, as well as there are the three stooges of the original Mulan film in this film as well. Um, But this love interest is not General Shang. He is of the same sort of social class as Mulan, which I think was a deliberate decision to more appeal to the Chinese audience. Um, So they do change the story a little bit, but we're not sure exactly to what extent he is going to be involved in this film as a main character. And that really leaves it up in the air to whether or not we can predict this film will follow that formula and do a really good job of it. But I think that if 
this character is developed well enough, this film will uh, really appeal to the male audience as well as the female audience and, and do the uh, female protagonist action film really well. What has me really hopeful is that Nikki Caro has a strong track record for directing successful films with female leads. And funnily enough, her debut film, Well Rider, did involve a story just like Mulan, where there is a female protagonist who is overcoming the stereotypes of gender roles in her cultural society. And I think that if she can translate that uh, early work of hers to this film, despite it being a lot later in her career and a much higher budget film, I think she'll do a fantastic job. Some of the final concerns are kind of the major ones. The main concern is that the actress who plays Mulan in this film had some controversy early on uh, when this film was still in production, where she made some comments on social media that were very pro Hong Kong police and pro Beijing. And a lot of people took offense to what she said and called to boycott the film in support of the Hong Kong protests. Now this could hurt um, the film or it could not. I think that it has more downside than it has upside. The uh, best case scenario, I think, is that if this film performs really well, the word of mouth performs really well, people will go to see that, um, Western audiences will go and see the film, and not really pay any mind to those calls to protest, and I think it will kind of be brushed under the rug. Um, but if the film does poorly, I think that it will be another reason added on top of the others as to why people will not go to see this film and go and see other films instead, maybe going to see Onward instead of Mulan. But I do think that it still will have an impact. But as far as mainland China goes, I think that it won't have as much of an impact there as it does on the Western societies and the Western markets. And of course, we have to talk about the coronavirus. The COVID-19 virus um, is still rampaging through China and it's spread to a lot of the rest of the world. Depending on how um, it progresses this next month, it may be um, more of a... A deterrent for people to go to the movie theaters. I know that theaters in China are still not open um, and whether or not they will be opened by the time the March 27th release date comes around. Um, I'm not sure if the film will be pushed back in China. If the film does well in uh, Western markets and releases on time as scheduled, then I think it will still do well in China. But if it does poorly and the release times are still staggered, I think that the film could do a lot worse overall and maybe not perform to the extent that it should be performing with a $200 million budget. Let me know what you think about the PG-13 rating in the comments down below and whether or not you think Mulan will be a success or failure because of some of the reasons I've listed or some others. If you like this video and want to see more just like it, please consider giving us a big thumbs up and subscribe down below. Or you can stick around and watch more news, reviews, and other film stuff right now.